Good to see all your beautiful faces here today. So, my name is Jacob and my resume is Clint. His question is very simple. I'm an alcoholic. I am someone who drank alcohol to the point that it nearly cost me my life. And I'm here to share part of my story, part of my experiences with the hope that somebody will get this message and transform their lives. And I also want to you know, give out a phone number that whoever is in a situation where they feel they need help, they can find it. Because it's one thing to talk about the problem and not get into the solution. So I'll get back um, many years ago. I was only 15 years old, around about the age that some of you guys are. I discovered alcohol. So the issue of drug and alcohol abuse, it usually does not come off, doesn't come <coughs> from a complete stranger. We introduce by people close to us, friends, family, and so many people I've spoken to have shared that type of experience where they first got drugs and alcohol from people who were close to them. So I got on, on a school day, um, a friend of mine came with a bottle of vodka. We drank it, and. I loved the illusion that it created. And I call it an illusion because it's not true. It's a false picture. Sadly, unfortunately for me, I spent the next 14 years of my life chasing that false picture. I thought alcohol made me feel happy. I thought it made me feel confident. I thought it made me be likable be able to like other people, be able to socialize, be creative. All that was a lie. This is what alcohol did to me. It took away everything I believed in. When I last had my drink of alcohol, and I was then smoking badge, I came to that realization that I had become everything I detested in a human being. I woke up looking at the mirror, failing to recognize the person I saw. But that person was the person I had become. So I had no idea how it transformed from a young boy experimenting with alcohol at school to a 29-year-old facing jail, hospital, or death. Those were the three guaranteed outcomes that my drinking and drug use were going to achieve. One of those three, without a doubt. And I know that it's true because I had friends who died due to drugs and alcohol. I had friends who ended up in jail due to drugs and alcohol. I had friends who developed different medical conditions. And all I thought, all I had to deal with was the realization that one of these days, it was going to be me. So I knew I had to stop. I had to stop to save my life. If not, it was all going to be a sad story. And now, the work that we're doing as a team, as a collective, so many organizations working together, joining hands with the government of Zimbabwe, and we would really like to commend the government for all the amazing work that they've done through the Interministerial Task Force and the National Committee. Because if there is no support or the willingness from the powers that be for us to do this work, we will lose the whole generation. And bold stances have been taken and we commend that. We're also working with different United Nations entities. We also commend their support in terms of technical and material support in the fight against drug and substance abuse. And the private sector as well, the different companies that are all coming together to sponsor and support these type of initiatives to make things happen, to make things possible. So today, what do we want to do? What do we want to achieve? I think what we want to do is to have an honest conversation. An honest conversation that will help to save all these young beautiful faces that I see this side. Because if we don't make these bold 
moves, bold decisions, bold actions, and honest conversations, it's going to get worse, and people are not going to find the help that they need. So, as I say, drugs and alcohol always lead to one of three places, jail, hospital, or death, and we need to prevent ourselves from ending up there. So I'll share a bit more on how I got so. I went through a support group and went through something called the 12 steps. And someone else is going to present more in detail about those 12 steps. But for me, that worked. And when I went through that ex exercise, I came to the simple realization that I did not have a drug and alcohol problem. I had a drug and alcohol solution. So when you look at people who are struggling with drugs and alcohol, using my experience, these are people who've lost hope, who've lost um, sustainable coping mechanisms, and then we turn to drugs and alcohol. So drugs and alcohol to the alcoholic and the person using drugs, to them is not a problem, it's a solution. And we need to be honest to find and equip each other with the right skills for us to live lives that do not depend on drugs and alcohol. As Clint said, we are not going to be able to stop the supply. But what we can do is to work together as communities, as individuals, to build the skills and capacity that we need to have better coping mechanisms that we don't need to use drugs and alcohol and other unhelpful and harmful ways of dealing with our issues. So as a community, as a society, let's all come together, let's work together to build lives that do not need us to be intoxicated. Let's report suppliers when we find them, definitely. There is the helpline for the police. If ever you know someone who's dealing with drugs in your community, inform the police. They will come and take them away. They will deal with them because we don't need those people in communities. But when you find your brother or sister struggling with addiction, let's show them the love, let's show them tolerance, and let's help them to get the support that they need. Let's refer them to where they can get treatment. Let's refer them to places where they can get the necessary support. Let's not judge. So thank you very much for allowing me to open. I'll now close for those of you with your pens and papers or your phones close by to take this phone number so that if ever you feel like you're struggling with drugs and alcohol and you need someone to talk to, there is this helpline number. So the number is 771 611 311 0771-611-311. That's the National Addiction Helpline. It's there 24 hours. We are happy to help. Um, get people get access to the solutions that they need and we're here to support. So feel free to engage with us. I hope that you all enjoyed the exciting presentations that are coming up and please for coming. Clint told you most of my story in that short introduction. But what he missed out on, first of all, if you didn't understand the skit that was there, the three takeaways that you were supposed to take away from that was there was an unwanted pregnancy, there was an arrest, and there was a death. These three things are inevitable if you take drugs and you don't stop or come out of it. I am blessed because through prayer from myself and from my family, I literally gradually stopped using drugs. I made a decision and that decision was driven by when I looked at my mom and what I was putting her through. I put it through hell. No one is supposed to go through what my mom went through. Especially after carrying me for nine months, and I'm a firstborn, and I have two siblings following me, no one should go through that. Clinton, due to the fact that I went to Prince Edward, I was um, senior prefect, basketball captain, first team rugby, athletics, and um, my life changed when I started putting my trust in friends instead of the people that love me at home. I know there's so many young boys and girls there who are multi-talented. I know there's soccer players, there's rugby players, probably there's sprinters, and some of you want to be doctors, scientists, pilots, whatever. 
But the moment you agree to say yes to that first hit, you are basically saying, I don't want to be that anymore. You're throwing your life down the drain. When I first took drugs, that decision took me two seconds just to say, okay, let me try. I was using what we call motoriru, crystal meth. So it's a miracle to see me standing here because not many people get away from that. When I said yes to that thing, my life just changed. I lost about five or six jobs consecutively. Um, I put my mom through the worst. I would disappear from home for like three months. Um, I'd go seven days without eating or sleeping. And I looked like a fence. I was so thin, it was unbelievable. Like when I look at myself now, I don't even believe that it's me sometimes. But the one, the worst year of my life during the five years that I used to have, was the year that I stayed with my drug dealer. By the way, I did this all of this in South Africa. So I stayed in Midrand for one year with my drug dealer. And what he used to do was, he had a daughter that he would use to make me buy drugs from him. Because his daughter was using drugs as well. So he was selling drugs to his daughter, he was selling drugs to me, and for one whole year, all my salary was going to this man. I gave him my bank card, I gave him the pin code to my bank card, and every month end you just go and withdraw. As soon as he withdraws that money, he was a Nigerian man, so they have their beliefs. He would draw that money, then he wash his face with that money. And thank you, my brother, thank you, my brother. And I'm thinking, this is my money. And my mom would call me sometimes, son, please, I need help to fix the car. And I'm making like 10,000 rand a month, but I couldn't spare a cent give my own mother any money because all of it was going to this man. And in the one day something happened between me and his daughter that made me realize that this is not life. So what I did was the best thing anyone who is in addiction can do for themselves is to come out and ask for help. I remember that night I cried tears and then I went to work the next morning and I sent an email to my dad and said, Dad, I have a problem. My dad was here in Zimbabwe and I told him I'm addicted to drugs. He couldn't believe it. Because this is not the same son that he had raised, you know. This is what the effect. This is the effect of choosing to listen to friends instead of parents. That's what happens. So when I told my dad, things to pray for me, but uh, it only got worse for a certain period. I went back to job where I quit my job because I decided to run away from this drug dealer. And when I went to job, it became worse. I was now staying with my mom, and this is when I put her through the worst. And. Um, I remember I used to commit these crimes, these, these silly crimes where you feel like you're untouchable, you're invincible. But if you're caught, you can spend years in prison. And I missed jail time. I remember nearly being stabbed by a screwdriver. I remember um, running in with a rival gang at one time and someone pulled out a gun and for some reason it just died down. That's the grace of God. You know, so all these things will happen to you if you're going to, and there's no two ways about it. You can't smoke drugs and live a peaceful life. It's impossible. There's no peace in your life when you're using drugs. So I'm just here to appeal to all the kids, especially, that they remember this conversation and remember what I'm telling them, that when you decide, when someone approaches you and says, just try it, just try it, it's cool. It's a cool thing to do, it's a lie. That is the devil lying to you. And what the devil does is they see the potential in each and every one of you and he wants to stop it. So if you want to be something great in your life, say no to drugs, it's not a joke. If you want to be something great in your life, stay away from those friends who seem to like Juma party party, Jodoro, and just Juma fun fun, just joy joy. These days, it is actually way more cool to be different from the rest of the crowd. It's way more cool to be brilliant in school. It's way more cool to excel in your sport. It's way more cool to stay at home and listen to your parents. I know this now because I missed all those years in my life. So, to cut a long story short, um, the day that I decided enough is enough, I was looking at my mom one day. After three months of being in the street, I just came home. My usual routine was I come home, I eat, I sleep for two days gain some weight, energy, and I go back to the street. But this time something was different. I looked at my mom and she was so thin. Her cheekbones were popping out and I could tell that she was stressed, you know? And I had an honest conversation with myself and I said, if this woman dies tomorrow, it's because of me. 
And that's the day I decided to I cried to the Lord and I said, Lord, help me. I would go back to the streets, I didn't stop immediately, it took some time. But I remember I would light a pipe, I stop my pipe. And before I spoke, I would say a prayer. So I would close my eyes, say a prayer. All my friends are watching, some of them thought I was crazy. Say a prayer, say a prayer, open my eyes and they light it and get high. And as silly as it may sound, eventually God answered my prayer. My mom, thank you, my mom and her family used to pray every single Wednesday. They would pray and dedicate that Wednesday for me. They would fast and just pray. My testimony is about prayer. My testimony is about never giving up on those people that love you. Addiction is not a spectator sport. It requires the community to be involved. Because no one can go through it by themselves, unfortunately. So for the parents as well who have kids who are struggling, or you know someone who's struggling, you need to support them as much as possible. And the best thing to do that, in my opinion, is on your knees. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with rehabilitation. Fair and good, fair and fine. But even God is the one who decides if they should go to rehabilitation. That's what I believe. You don't want to be arrested, you don't want to die, and you don't want to have an unwanted pregnancy. I remember the one girl, this kid just reminded me, one, one girl went out to a party, I met her in the street, and she was telling me a story. She said she was having a drink, just like the young lady was there, and something was put in the drink for her. And the Nigerians took her back to her, I'm sorry to use nationality, but it is what it is. They took her back to the place, and six of them abused this young lady. And there were, there were people smoking in the same room. Some of them were even offered to come and join, but they refused. There's no mercy for anyone. And the sad part is the only person who benefits out of all of this is the person who's selling this thing. The people at home don't benefit. The person using doesn't benefit. Only the person selling and allowing it to be sold benefits. And one thing I've seen, the difference between South Africa and Zimbabwe now is in South Africa, it seems like when they cook these things, they cook them so that when you smoke, you come back. But what's happening in this country, it's as if they're cooking them to kill you, to fry your brain with your hand. So I would never advise any of you young ones to even think about trying it. I'm not here to act, I'm not getting paid for this. I'm just here to share my story because I believe that's the reason why I came out of trouble. So I can spread my story with you. But I'll leave it there, and thank you again, Clint. Clint and I are wearing these blue shirts, not because he looks good in blue, his life, but because these were the very first shirts that were made when this campaign started with Billy and Clint and the gang, when we had it printed. So I hope we have more of this, and I hope each of you wearing this shirt can carry the message. If you know someone's struggling, don't even be scared to snitch on it. Don't be afraid to snitch on it. If you have a friend who's struggling with drug abuse, go and tell their parents. Being young, and um, I used to say I'm a recovering drug addict, but from today on, I'm going to say I stopped doing drugs. Um, uh, last month, I lost an acquaintance of mine to substance abuse. He was doing uh, crack cocaine, and he was doing it for quite some time, and it's an unfortunate loss that he lost his life due to substance abuse. I also lost um, uh, some relatives of mine due to substance abuse related deaths. And um, I know friends of mine who have damaged their health because of drugs. I know people who have damaged their children's health because of drugs. Their children are born with difficulties, be it mental, be it health-wise or physical difficulties. Because of drugs. I know people who have lost so many opportunities because of drugs. One of them, myself, um, has done a lot of damage to my body, a lot of damage to my future and to my potential. And um, I'm, I'm quite emotional about it. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I would like to thank each and every one of you for coming here. I feel very supported. This is on a personal view. And I believe that other people who also do substances in my shoes would also feel the same way if they had all these people who would come and give them support from time to time. Even at home, we have children, we have siblings, we have friends, we have family, and we have these people who are also strangers who we bump shoulders and you know, cross paths with. And these are the same people who are just like me, 
who would feel the exact same way if we came together and helped, gave them a helping hand, gave them a good, encouraging word. You know, it's not always the harsh treatment that works. So, you know, I know at times we're angry and we're disappointed with these people, but sometimes just give them a loving smile, a loving word, a kind support, you know, comfort the psychic spirit. Give them some strength. And they won't respond in anger and in rebellion like we always think they do. You know, there comes a time in drug use where you actually sit down and introspect and say, okay, my actions are this way, but there are certain people who are showing me love. And there's a certain part in you that receives that and that can, that can nurture that and grow it into you. And hopefully, by the grace of God, with prayer and with prayers from others, you will reach a point where you will end up giving up on drugs. So I would like to also reinforce that, yes, it's about the people who are doing drugs. And it's about the people who are selling drugs. It's say no to drugs and do not sell the drugs. And do not do nothing about it. Although we're not selling and we're not doing